What's up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into the holy mess. I'm going to share the screen. I want to talk about this clip that I saw actually a few days ago. And um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about Keon Henderson and Shawnee a little bit over here. And when I saw this clip, I just started thinking about some things. So let's just go into this clip and then we're going to talk about it. All right. <laughs> uh huh. He's feeling you. Uh-huh. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Don't be no tough guy. Let it out. 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 Uh-huh. Like that. Let it out. Let it. Let it out like that. Let it out like that. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out like that. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out like that. That's the spot where your water turns to wine. When you let it out. When you let it out. When you let it out. Let go of your cute stuff and let it out. The Bible says you have many teachers, but not many fathers. There is a difference in the sound of a father than a teacher. Give me a more shot. Do not. Uh huh. He's feeling you. Uh huh. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Don't be no tough guy. Let it out. 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 Uh, like that. Let it out. Let it. Let it out like that. Let it out like that. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out like that. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out like that. That's the spot where your water turns to wine. When you let it out. When you let it out. When you let it out. Let go of your cute stuff and let it out. The Bible says you have many teachers, but not many fathers. There is a difference in the sound of a father than a teacher. Give me a more shot. Do not. Enough of that. Listen, I wanted to talk about that because I have no issue with a man crying. Actually, I think more men need to release the tension and the stress. And I'm not saying they need to be crybabies and crying all the time, but I'm definitely not of the opinion that men don't cry because I feel like a man that doesn't cry is probably swinging on somebody like Diddy. Anyway, there's a couple of things that I think about that when I see that. One, it's either fake because I didn't see any tears. I, I saw him leaning on T.D. Jake's shoulder. And a lot of stuff like that is performative because they are in front of an audience and he's supposed to be in front of this alleged great man, right? And I think T.D. Jake's is his mentor, possibly. I believe that's what I've heard. So he can't just stand up there and, and act like he doesn't feel anything, right? So he has to act like he's feeling something. T.D. Jakes is squeezing his hand and gripping his hand. And he's like, yeah, that's right. Let it out. Let it out. What if he just stood there and he's like, I don't have nothing to let out. I'm good. <laughs> then that would make T.D. Jakes look some kind of way, right? Because if you are familiar with some of these churches where they might call you out and, and whatever, and they're saying things to you and then they put their hand on you, a lot of times people ain't feeling nothing. And they might push them down using their hand, putting their hand on their forehead and and pushing them down. But it's performative. It's not because they felt anything. It's because that's the way it's supposed to flow, because it's supposed to look a certain type of way. 
So that's one way that that could go. But the other thing that I thought, and this is what I thought initially, because what I just said this now is like my second thought. What I thought initially is that, okay, you've got this man, he's on his third marriage to Shawnee now Henderson, formerly O'Neill. And I believe that the marriage is a marriage of opportunity. I, I actually do believe that he, uh, how do I put it? I won't say he preyed on her, but I feel like when he saw the opportunity, he was like, hmm, this could be, you know, this could be a good fit. But I actually do believe that Shawnee really does like this guy and love. I won't say she doesn't love him. I do believe that she seems to be more happy with him than she was with Shaq. And she even came out and admitted, even though she tried to backtrack a little bit and then tried to blame Shaq for responding and getting upset with the people who shared their thoughts and opinions about what she said in her book, saying that she doesn't believe that she was ever really in love with him. That's what she said. I don't understand like why people were getting upset with people like myself and others who were just basically expounding on what she said. If you said it, that's what you meant. And 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 honestly, no, no, most people, most people are not surprised. You were married to a man who was a real big time basketball star and is still making a ton of money. Okay. No one said that he treated you like a queen or was very faithful to you and honored you and treated you like a wife should be treated. No one said that, but you're the one that came out to say that you don't think you were ever really in love with him. But I do believe that she actually does love this man, Keon. Seriously, I do. Now, the first lady thing and this church business stuff, I don't really know that that's what she wanted to do, but because she really loved him, I feel, I feel like she took on that role because this is who I married. So I guess this is what I got to do. But what if she just stood up for herself to say, look, babe, I love you, but I can't do the first lady thing. I don't honestly even really want to come to your church all the time. I might come and visit with you sometimes, but I don't want to be there all the time. But I, I ain't signing up to be a first lady. I ain't signing up to do all these conferences and marriage, you know, workshops and all of these other things that you need for me to use my face so that you can make money. He's using her. And honestly, it's in my personal personal opinion, it's kind of like you reap what you sow because she used Shaq. And again, that's not saying that Shaq treated her well in terms of just being an upstanding individual, husband, father, honoring his wife, adoring her, putting all others before her, no one else besides her. No, he had a bunch of side chicks. He was buying other chicks' cars. He was screwing other women. No, he did not treat her white right as a wife. So I'm not saying that. But um, she got into this relationship with this man. And then as soon as they tied the knot, she was doing women's conferences. I talked about that some time ago. I really don't believe that's what she really wants to do. But uh, because she loves him, she's doing it. But is this about God or is this about money in a business? It's about money in a business. This church is a business. And Keon standing up there, leaning on TDJ's shoulder, him saying, let it out, let it out, let it out. Don't be no tough guy, whatever. He is faking it, in my personal opinion. I believe that everything, for the most part, with him is performative. And how ironic is it for him to be up on T.D. Jake's arm and shoulder, leaning on him, crying, allegedly, but then when this woman who he said has been a problem for the past four years, being emotional, he told her to 
hush in the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. But that was okay to do that. But you can stand up there and cry on TDJ's shoulder. The hypocrisy is just outstanding when it comes to stuff like this. So I don't know when this was filmed. I don't know if this is something recent. I don't know if this is something that happened last year and the clip is just coming out and it's going viral. I really don't know. Because when it comes to these clips, unless a time stamp is on it, we don't really know when it was done. So I don't know. I can't say when it was done. But at either rate, I felt like this was performative. I feel like Keon, he, my personal opinion, that's all I'm doing over here. I feel like Keon, he is an opportunist, opportunist and he is using Shawnee for all intents and purposes for the sake of his ministry. Just like I believe Jamal Bryant is using this new chick that he proposed marriage to for the sake of his business, the church. Because it looks better for these guys to have a wife. Just like Tim Scott. He's been in politics all these years. And I'm going to talk about him in another one. But he only got this woman, claimed that they were dating, then proposed marriage to her for the sake of the office that he holds and hopes to be able to have, which is to be the vice presidential candidate for 45, who's trying to become 47. It looks good. It looks better. Keon, he had two wives before Shawnee. Now he's on the third. It looks good to have a wife, a quote unquote first lady in your business. And that's it. And some people said, some people thought those tears might be because he's fighting the real feelings that he has, which there's been some allegations. And I'm not going to go into all of that right now, but there's been some allegations about him and possibly another man in the ministry of music. I don't know. I'm just saying what other people have said. But you all can let me know what you think about it because I really don't know, but I really felt like it was performative and him being on his third marriage with Shawnee. I don't see things being much better in this marriage than it was in the previous I don't believe that third time's a charm when it comes to this. So you all can let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say bye.